Once again, good afternoon, hockey fans. Welcome to Rensselaer in Houston Fieldhouse for this non-league matchup between the Riverhawks of the University of Massachusetts Lowell and your engineers of Rensselaer. Let's meet the starting lineups. First, the visitors from Lowell, starting in the goal, number 33, Tyler Wall. On defense, number 19, Anthony Baxter. And number 11, John McDonald. Starting forwards for UMass Lowell, at left wing, number 15, Ryan Domowski. At center is number 12, Charlie Levesque. And at right wing, number 28, Connor Sodergren. The rest of the UMass Lowell Riverhawks, their head coach, Norm Basin. And now, let's meet the starting lineup for the engineers of RPI. Leading your engineers on the ice, please welcome the junior engineer, Joey Raganti. Starting in the goal, a freshman from Guelph, Ontario, number 31, Owen Savory. At left defense, a freshman from Bloomington, Minnesota, number 23, Jake Johnson. At right defense, he's a junior from Toronto, Ontario, number 24, Will Riley. The starting forwards for the engineers. At left wing, a freshman from Espoo, Finland, number 11, Otto Ville Lepinen. At center, a junior from Mississauga, Ontario, number 16, Jacob Hayhurst. And at right wing, a freshman from Bratislava, Slovakia, number 39, Jacob Latka. The rest of the engineers, their head coach, Dave Smith. Assistant coaches Dan Jewell and Chuck Weber. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to Center Ice National Grid Foundation has joined Retzelier in launching the Shoot for the Stars program designed to motivate elementary school students by rewarding them with tickets to Rensselaer men's and women's hockey games. At Center Rice, our student achievers from the Troy City School District, Troy Mayor Patrick Madden, Rensselaer County Executive Steve McLaughlin, Lori Poltinski, our local customer and community manager, and the Associate Vice President of Student Life and Director of Athletics, Dr. Lee McElroy. Joining them, UMass Lowell men's hockey captain, Connor Wilson, and RPI men's hockey captain, Tommy Grant. We'd like to thank National Grid Foundation for its support of our youth and community. Let's give a round of applause for these great student achievers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise and as we honor and respect our country and the men and women who have served and continue to serve America, the RPI Pep Band will play the National Anthems of Canada and the United States of America.
won this year it was against Union in league play. This, of course, against Lowell of Hockey East. Lowell had a big Hockey East weekend sweep before this weekend. They beat UConn in a pair, a team that RPI, a team that beat RPI here at the Houston Fieldhouse 3-1 earlier this season. We're ready to drop the puck now. RPI and Lowell from the Houston Fieldhouse. Nice little afternoon hockey game. One by Lowell, the opening draw flipped in. Riley over there is going to chop it up the wall. Good touch pass on for Hayhurst, and on they go into the offensive zone. Poked off the stick of Hayhurst by McDonald. And now gathered up by Lowell, flipped through center. It'll hop up into the bench, and we get a stoppage in play. Very early on, 20 seconds in, no score. Center ice draw coming. Both teams making changes. Brady Whiffin in there. There was a swap, I guess, in the lines with uh, Tommy Lee and Todd Burgess switching places. So it's Lee, Whiffin, and Polino on the second line. Lowell gets it deep. Played around by Kyle Hallbauer to the near side. Whiffen tries to kick it out to center. Whip back into the far corner. First one to it, Connor Wilson. Now a shot from Master over the top of Savory into the near corner. Actually, Savory got his left shoulder on it. It'll be lobbed up the wall on for Polino. Circle shot. Pad saved by Wall to the near corner. Looking for that short side was Polino along the ice. But it's turned away by Wall, who was solid on Friday. This one's ripped in from center by Wilson, left aside by Savory. As the shot came on goal from center, uh, Samick takes a hit but gets it deep on the redirect from Ott. Played behind the goal now by the Riverhawks. Lowen stops there. One of the two captains for UMass Lowell. Crossing center and ringing it in. On the far side was Kandata. Puck upon the RPI goal. Kicked at by Ferner. Now Lowen, he's wrapped up by Samick. Jerry trying to help out. Kandata there with him. Kandata trying to work it out. Flip to the far side corner. For, uh, Ferner's going to be there first into the skates of Ott, but he can't find it. Kept in along the far side by Chase Blackman of Lowell. Now Kandata in the far corner. He's tied up by Ferner. Picked out of the corner by Hausinger. He takes a bump, but stays on the puck. Now a nice little saucer pass to the near point. McDonald looking for the far side. Maybe a redirect there, because that certainly wasn't anywhere near the net. Uh, but uh, kept along the far side again. Here's Lowen behind the goal. Good spell here from the Riverhawks. Lowen trying to turn it down low. He does find Knobloch there. Sam Knobloch, freshman out of Rochester, Michigan, will work it to the wall for Blackman. Far side, centering pass intercepted by Burgess. He makes a nice move in his own zone and finds Ott, who gets it deep, and the engineers can get a change. Actually came on goal, so Ott will stay on the pressure. Lobbed out to center by the Riverhawks, gathered up by Will Riley. One goal, one assist yesterday. Two and three on the season, respectively, for him. Five points for the junior now, and Pittsburgh uh, Penguins uh, draft choice. Back in 2000, and I believe 16, 17, and it's going to be held on to here by Wall. And we'll get a draw. Shots are two to one. Lowell early. Although a couple of those have come outside the zone. Not real indicative. And this is kind of how we saw the first period starting on Friday. No real great chances early on. And uh, it was a good defensive battle. I think it was pointed out. Both teams played pretty well in front of their own net. Not allowing the big chances. Here's Jaron Burke. Trying to work it out to the far side. Now here is Johnson looking for the back door. Morello got a stick on it, but it went into the corner. Kind of late to see that puck on the shot from the near side point. Now the Riverhawks have it. They move it near side. The defenseman, John McDonald from Livonia, Michigan, into the zone. Drop pass there. Levesque works it below the goal line, behind the net now. Now Johnson's got to be careful. He had his man wrapped up, but he slips away. That's Sodergren. Worked in from the far point by Gorenson, who saw a lot of ice time on Friday against these engineers from the blue line. It was Gorenson we saw a lot of with Seth Barton. Gorenson, one of the assistant captains. Not the only one for Lowell. A good poke check on the far side of the RPI zone by Hayers, and he swats it out of the air down ice. It's going to be rolling towards Wall. 
No icing here, of course. It didn't make it to the end line. Thought for a chance it might have rolled its way down, but would have ended up on goal anyway. Tipped along by Lowell and deep by Connor Wilson, senior captain from Calgary, Alberta. Around on the near side, past Lepinen. And they're going I can hear someone hollering, no ice, as Avni Barisha will play. Barisha gets it back. Senior out of Lake Ariel, Pennsylvania. Now a little bit of speed picked up by Wilson down the middle, near side carry. Across the red line into RPI territory, near side circle. Backhand try, blocked away nicely by Whiffen and his long reach. Off the back of the net, picked up there by Hallbauer. Kyle Hallbauer out of Howell, New Jersey, the freshman with three assists on the year. Pass to center came from Whiffen, who was broken up. And now turning with it is Lee. Lee makes a move, tried to stay on the puck, lost it there to Barisha, chips it back through center. Off of the stick of Lowen, gathered up by Hallbauer. And now Brady Ferner, another one of those freshmen for RPI out of Dakota Dune, South Dakota. Gathered up now by Lowell. They'll play it far side. Back to the near side of their own zone is Barisha. Five minutes into the first period, no score. Engineers and a UMass Lowell from the Houston Fieldhouse. Glad you are joining us on this uh, little bit of a hazy Sunday afternoon in upstate New York. Wrapped around by Samick. Played along for Burgess. Burgess will play it through the middle of the ice. Taking a hit there was Jerry. And now gathering it in the Riverhawks in their own zone. Tipped along into the RPI end, but a good hit thrown on Knobloch separates him from the puck. Flipped in deep by Jerry. RPI will complete its change as Wall goes back to leave it aside. Anthony Baxter, sophomore from Oakville, Ontario, gets it as far as center. A high hit thrown there on Ferner. And this one will hop into the scorer's box and uh, we're going to center ice draw here, maybe Fans talking don't about where this should go. Shot still 2-1, to one, Lowell, 14-21 on the clock. In the first period, not much going on here. We have a, one of the additions to the lineup here for Lowell, Chris Schultz, or Schutz, rather, is a redshirt sophomore from Keller, Texas. Wrapped in far side by Barton. Shots over there. Worked along by Morello. Barton keeps it in nicely at the blue line. Fed across. Wrist shot coming. Save on the right pad by Savory. And now shuts again. Takes a hit. Buck comes free to Burke. Engineers have three if they hurry. Burke into the zone far side. Waiting. Carrying. High slot. Shot flip wide. It was poked away by Gorenson in the end. And then Burke finishes off his hit on Gorenson. Quickly snapped to center, poked away off the stick of O'Neill, picked up by Riley. Will Riley gets a bit of a pick there from Johnson. Now he'll turn back behind his own goal. Will Riley still on the carry, and his pocket is picked eventually by uh, the man on the far side. That was uh, Demowski. And uh, getting his stick caught in a skate was Laka. Man goes down, but we play on. Johnson on for Hayhurst. Johnson cutting to the net. Hayhurst trying to find him, and nearly did. And, uh, Johnson went down, puck back to the point. This is headed towards the RPI goal, and it's going to be in. It was off an RPI stick, and you're not going to see a play like that too often. Savory was headed off for the delayed penalty, so there's still going to be a penalty called, I believe, on Lowell, but they're going to score a goal here. Who got this one is the question. Which Lowell player touched it last ultimately is going to get the goal. But it's going to be one nothing Lowell on a puck shot from RPI's own end of the ice backwards. Now, I think they can look at this and see if it was a Lowell touch. I don't know if they are. They're just talking about it right now. Fiola and Place. That's Peter Fiola and Douglas Place Jr. The referees today, Todd uh, Whittemore and Phil Kitchen. So you know to look at that. It was an RPI stick, certainly, that worked it back towards the point. It, Deflected off of something and win the goal. One of the more bizarre plays you will see. There will be a penalty. Sodergren's going off here.
Face off one back. It's going to be shot in. It'll wrap its way around. Tie up in the near corner. Now back to the point. Riley off for Johnson. Johnson pulled it back, tried to take a wrist shot that was blocked down. Uh, kept in by Riley here. To Lee, back to Johnson. Johnson trying to trade places now, or with Riley rather. And now Burgess will throw it off the end wall for Lee. Back to the near point, Johnson. McDonald's going to get credit for the low goal. Johnson, wrister wide to the target. And it'll be shot all the way down the ice. 116 to go on the RPI power play. Insiders on the season, six out of 40, that's 15%. Riley behind his own net has it poked away lifted in front shot blocked actually never shot never came from low in uh, Lowell PK on the season 84.3 percent 43 of 51 killed RPI was one for two on Friday first power play chance of the game for either team comes now 12 minutes left in the first a one nothing Lowell lead off to the very bizarre for lack of a a better turn and own goal. I think it was Laka, but certainly not to blame entirely there. He's just trying to pass it back to the point. Left the zone and right into the RPI open net on the delayed penalty. Anyway, shot coming. Polino, no. He'll pull it back. Throw it back around. Near side. Corner. It's Hayhurst. Down low. Centering feed. Looking for the one-timer for Laka. It was a good idea from Lapinin. And Laka just couldn't steer it on goal. Went Right just over his stick, I think. And it'll be helped along by Savory after Lowell was able to clear it out. Back behind the engineer's net. Ferner over there. A lot of pressure coming in the form of Levesque. And it's eventually going to be taken away Lowell here returns. by Linden. Out Two of the box, straight. Sodergren. RPI 0 for 1 on the power play. Tie, uh, tie up far side. Puck comes free. Gorenson out to center. Carried on further by Domowski. Trying to walk his way in on Ferner. Saved by Savory. Second try. And that one's kept out as well. Another centering feed to the side of the cage goes Savory and he'll cover it up. And it was Domowski with the initial attack there. And the engineers uh, able to come out of that unscathed. 10.48 to go first period. 1-0 Massachusetts uh, Lowell leading. We're going to get our media stoppage here. Sox shots are 6-1 Lowell. As we'll take a look uh, at the stats from last game. Run down the scoring because I wasn't able to bring that to you at the beginning of the game. Will Riley open the scoring on Friday at 10.52 of the first period with assist to Otto Ville Lepinen and Jacob Hayhurst. Then we had John McDonald scoring for Lowell at 159. Assist to Charlie Levesque and Ryan Lowen that tied the game at 1-1. Uh, then RPI took the lead at 8.33 of the third period. Jacob Laka from Will Riley and Patrick Polino. Center ice. And now Samick lifted along and in deep. Behind to the far side point, Ferner. Wrist shot coming. And that one's kicked away. Gathered up now by Lowell. This will hop out of play. We're going to stoppage. Ten twelve to go. Engineers with their second shot of this one. And they've been dealt an unfortunate hand to begin this game. We'll see how they respond to being down by a goal on a play that was, could be described on nothing less than a fluke. Harris up the near side, all the way down. 
shot up the near boards. And through center, good connection there. On comes O'Neill. He'll turn around to the near circle, feed to the middle. Good poke check by Whiffen. And now back comes Polino. Polino with Lee. Lee crashing the net. Can't quite get his stick on it. It was Polino just kind of filtering that puck towards the front of the goal. Went right in front of Wall and also out of the reach of Lee, whereas the engineers might have been in business there. Trying to work his way in is O'Neill. He gets stood up by Grant. Puck flipped to center. Gathered up there by Barton. Barton throws it cross ice, finding uh, Housinger. And a lob right back in by Nick Master, a senior from Brumall, Pennsylvania. Good connection. The engineers break to center. Laka and Hayhurst into the zone. Jacob Laka, far side feed, flipped over the top by Hayhurst. What an opportunity there. Tough chance there for Hayhurst, who had to try and stop and finish all in one motion. And his attempt actually ended up just going just over the net. I don't think that puck was sitting flat. When you throw it with that much velocity as Laka did into the middle, has to be a perfect uh, steer on goal there as the puck, puck played back to the point. It was intercepted. It was a little bit behind Riley. Now a poke check here. Kept in low and shot. I think Savory might have got a piece of that one as it turned into a two on one for the Riverhawks. Now picked away there by Johnson. Ahead for Laka. Pried off his stick by Lowen, and we have a whistle here in an offside on Lowell. 8 30 to go in period number one. One nothing. This is the UMass Lowell lead. On a goal being credited to John McDonald. He scored on Friday night on a, a, a puck that he actually shot into the goal. This one he was credited with uh, only because of the fact that uh, he was the last Lowell player to touch it. It was, in fact, shot in by an engineer's stick. From all the way down ice, the puck was played from about 190, 180 feet from the RPI goal by an engineer stick, trying to play it back as RPI had a delayed penalty. Delayed call on the Riverhawks. So Savory was unfortunately not close enough, enough to his net to react. And you could just see, or guess what the expression on his face must have been when he saw the puck sliding by him and there's nothing he could do about it. He was headed to the bench for the extra skater and uh, unfortunately went right into the RPI goal. We have the uh, shovelers out there clearing the ice here. And one of our three mid-period stoppages that have been introduced this year. This one though, the middle one after the 10-minute mark had been put in place last year to clear away some of the snow in front of the benches and in the crease. I'm a goaltender, though. I don't really want to necessarily want all that snow cleared out. A lot of the goalies would stack it up next to the post and help it on trickling pucks, but uh, not anymore. Now you get a the crease gets cleaned out every 10 minutes. Back to action here. Puck shot near side. Poked away by Whiffen. Gathered up by McDonald in his own zone. He'll go D to D. Far side, Baxter, he'll flip it along. Brady Ferner back to pick it up for RPI. We got a whistle here in the late offside. Called, will drawn up at neutral ice. Engineers are back in action next weekend. They head to Notre Dame for a pair. On Friday, the 30th of November, then December 1st. 7 o'clock starts uh, Eastern, both of those game, games, excuse me. RPI football still in action. I hope to be able to run these interviews. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to run these interviews uh, between periods. I spoke with the offensive and defensive coordinators for the engineers uh, about uh, the upcoming games. And I've lost my Dell laptop power cord. Here's Hayhurst walking in. And it's knocked away, looking to find Lepinen. Laka, he gives it away. Shot coming. Savory with a stop there on Sodergren. There's a nice move by Hayhurst to move into the zone. His feet across the uh, low Kyle slot for Lampinen. I think it took a deflection off the stick of the defenseman and uh, disrupted that attack. Seven thirty-seven to go.
In the first, still 1 nothing Lowell. Shots are 8 2, Riverhawks. Deflected shot, found its way to Savory anyway off the stick of Barton, uh, but it was easily turned away. Johnson in the near corner for the engineers plays it around behind Billy Jerry on his horse over to pick it up in the far corner he'll lob it high in the air and off the glass and out of play and lucky fans and attract this one down and have herself a souvenir draw coming in the engineer zone master to take it up against Billy Jerry. It'll be picked up by Riley. Shot to the near side, Burgess. And now Riley again. Tipped along by Jerry in deep. Help to the near side. And now fed to center ice. Wilson all the way down on the redirect. Picked up by Matt Harris. Sophomore defenseman from Sudbury, Mass. Works up the near side for Morello. Jake Morello in. His centering pass goes all the way through. Ferner pinching in. Shot hit a shin pad. Couple of touches of the puck at the point. Keeps alive by Linden. Down low for Burke. Skips through him to the near side. Pinned up against the boards in the corner by Morello. Jake Morello digs away there. Flipped out by Housinger. Now with speed to center. Come the Riverhawks. Kandata into the RPI zone. Takes a shot. Rebound right into the net front there. A chance for Lowen and Savory stops that one as well. Finally lifted out to center ice by Morello. And now given away at neutral ice. On for Morello into the zone near side. Morello stops at the half boards. Flips it down low. Looking for Harris on the pinch. Harris back up top. Shot by Alaka. Left pad save. And Wall lost sight of it. And it's in the far corner. It'll be helped around to the near side. Good chance there for Jacob Laka on a drop pass. Engineers being unselfish in the offensive zone. Now Halbauer will ring it in. Wrapped around to the near side. Leppinen waits for it. Now Hayhurst. Hayhurst in the circle. Hayhurst stick handling. Slot. And he got tied up there by Knobloch. And it's Knobloch flipping it up the boards. Trying to keep it in was Grant. Just left the zone. He will lob it into Lowell territory. Gathered up again by Knobloch. Cross ice pass. Hit somebody else. It uh, shuts and it comes all the way down in on goal and it'll be covered up by Savory. 5-12 to play in the first period. 1-0 is the Lowell lead. And we get a stoppage and I believe our final media stoppage here. It is faculty and staff appreciation night. As uh, the RPI athletic director, Dr. Lee McElroy is up on the Jumbotron. Welcoming all the faculty and staff in attendance here tonight. RPI football, the big story of yesterday, came away with a win, 21-13, over the third-ranked Brockport Golden Eagles. And, uh, so I sat down with the offensive and defensive coordinators. Uh, Nick Marcella and Jeff Dittman. I had a nice long chat with them. Hopefully my computer cooperates with us here and are able to bring that to you during our first intermission. Wall. In net once again here. A couple of shutouts for him on the year. Engineers got to him for two on 23 shots on Friday. But he... Looks sharp in there again tonight. His numbers, talked about it on Friday, but his numbers really indicate how this Lowell team is a good defensive team, but like RPI, struggles at times to score. You have a sub two goals against average for your netminder. He's 500 on the season. The team's 500 as well. Puck played all the way through. It's going to be intercepted actually by the goaltender stick of Laka on this centering try. He'll cover it up. Angular stoppage here. 453 left first period. 1-0 is the lower lead. And RPI looking to find an answering goal before this uh, time winds down in the first. 
Sunday afternoon hockey at the Houston Fieldhouse. I don't think the engineers have any more four o'clock starts the rest of the year. They do on the road at the uh, Catamount Cup up in Vermont on Friday the 28th. Moved along here, a chance for a two on one, maybe a three on one. Right, a shot coming over the top from Donovan Ott. Caroms to the middle of the slot area where it's worked out by Gorenson. Kandata, he runs into Ott, puck goes to the corner. It's between the wall and Kandata's skate. Now he's got his foot on top of it. Centering pass, low and a quick shot and a save by Savory. Poked out to center ice by Polino. Now gathered up again by Barton and the Riverhawks. Good connection to the RPI line, although it's poked away by Laka. Or excuse me, make that Polino. Third try, it's Hallbauer. He'll lob it up down the uh, far side. Tie up in the far corner of the Lowell zone now. It's Hallbauer out of the corner. Back to the point. Pass handcuffed his man, Ferner. And in a touch pass here for O'Neill. He finds Wilson. Shot over the top. It's the glass behind Savory. It was uh, Jacob Hayhurst, the last man back, who was filling in for Hallbauer, who had jumped into the attack. Kept in far point by Lowell. The, uh, Master trying to corral. Ferner takes it away from him. Now a touch pass for Hayhurst. He'll settle down a puck that's on edge and move it along. Giving it back, give and go, shot, he scores! Jacob Hayhurst on the give and go from Otto B. Lepinen. And we're tied at one, what a pretty play. And this top line keeps on rolling. Second goal of the season for Hayhurst to go along with his 11 assists. The helper, at least the primary helper, goes to Lepinen as Hayhurst goes top right corner on wall. It was a beautifully executed give and go in the zone. Not the easiest angle of passes on either of those. And the catch and the finish by Hayhurst. 1-1 one, one game. 3.22 to go in the period. Johnson risks it wide of the goal. Now, jam try there. Burke a couple of cracks at it. Now it's covered up by Wall as Jaron Burke was looking for his first tally on the year. Had one last year. By number 16, Jacob They announced the goal. Hayhurst, as I mentioned, two on the year. 21st of his career. Laka gets the assist. That's his first collegiate assist. The, the secondary Hayers, helper there. So Hayers from Lepinen and Laka. The top Hayers, line the chips season. in for the tying from goal. 11, Just what the doctor ordered late in this 16, period. 34. Fed down low by Sodergren. Johnson dumps his man in the corner. And it's worked out neatly to Jerry. Jerry through center, carries over the center ice logo on for Burgess. He takes a shot along the ice that goes wide. Ott ends up in the crease. Burgess a try to flex up into the netting. And I don't know if it would have counted because Donovan Ott was uh, spilled in the crease. I think he took a hit and was lying next to Wall, I think, when that shot came in. But uh, I guess no harm, no foul. They, they played on. If, if that puck, that Burgess shot did go in, you might have an argument if you're Lowell. If Ott gets up and gets out of there on his own, there's no problem. If he stuck around, that's where the issue might have lied, even if it was knocked in. He was hit into the crease by one of the uh, River Hawks. Two twenty-five to go in the first. One-one. Lowell has the puck in deep in the far corner. Trying to dig it out. Now work to the point. McDonald. Far point. Baxter. Baxter is shot. Never got to Savory. Picked up by Grant. Grant will play it up the far side boards. Shot back into the zone. A couple of Riverhawks need to touch up. So RPI is able to regather. Harris. Up the far side boards. Tipped in deep. And oh, how to play. A little optical illusion there. I thought Whiffen tipped into the zone, but he ended up tipping it over the glass. And out of play. 2 1 on the clock. Shots are now 12-8 Lowell, but the engineers have tied it up. And just from a psychological standpoint, RPI, you know, really needed that goal. 
when you have a goal that's not put in by the other team, you don't feel like the game, you should be losing the game, and that's exactly where the engineers now find themselves tied. Have an unfortunate bounce, went against RPI early on in this one. And left them on the short side of things, but Hayhurst in the top line have tied it up. Now a race for the puck, Lepin is going to pick it up in the far corner of the offensive zone by himself. Quickly the reinforcements come, Laka shot, and a save by Wall on their left shoulder. Jacob Laka has got a goal in every game he's played so far for the Engineers. Now he throws a hit on Knobloch as RPI backs up to its own zone. Laka around for Samic, back to Laka, the freshman from Bratislava, Slovakia. Helped along by Lepin into the zone, stopped up by Wall, 1.15 to go in this period. To the far side now. And it'll be fed. To, oh, intercepted by this Master. Touch pass here. Levesque a shot. Last that one caught Laka, excuse me, uh, Savory somewhere. Now a cross ice feed. Fed over the top. I don't think that's puck set on the ice for Master. Who missed way high. No, Baxter at the far point. Shot in a glove stop, but didn't hold it. Savory around to the near side. Poke to center. Race for it. Morello trying to jump on it. He's leaning on his man. That was McDonald. And the puck comes free to the near point. Johnson stick handling. Across for Riley. 26 seconds to go in the period. Backdoor one-timer Linden. And Tour Linden caught the heel of a stick and did not catch it cleanly in the slightest. And it went wide. Back to the RPI line it goes. Lowell trying to change. Quickly ahead to Polino. Patrick Polino into the zone near side. Makes a move. Gave it away. Uh, to Hausinger, and now it's the Riverhawks looking to break one more time. Furious ending to this period. It's three seconds, two and one. Uh, it'll be the Horn, there it is, ending the frame. Shots are 14-7 low, but it's a 1-1 tie. Engineers and Riverhawks, we're going to try to get this uh, interview to you during this first intermission. So long as my computer holds up. We will bring that interview uh, here. You're listening to live coverage of RPI Hockey on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy. Saves of the first period for Lowell's Tyler Wall, six, and for Oren Savory of RPI, 13 saves in the first period. Hey, we remind you to please stay in your seats for a special performance coming up in just a moment. And then, of course, we will also have the SefQ Money Machine Money Grab coming your way between periods. Fans, we'd like to direct your attention to the Zamboni door area. Please welcome ninth grader Brady Hills to the ice. She's been skating since she was five and is a proud member of the Houstonettes synchronized skating team. Most recently earned a gold medal in the preliminary free skate at the 2018 Empire State Winter Games. Please welcome Brady Hills.
Miss Brady Hills. Thank you, Brady. Now we direct your attention to the Engineer Pride area. Time for the Seth Q Money Machine Money Grab. Tonight's contestant, Nick Walsh. He'll have 60 seconds to grab as much cash as he can that's floating around inside the Seth Q Money Machine. Whatever he grabs, he keeps. Seth Q will count it up. They'll match it and donate that amount to a charity. We'll load it up with cash. We'll get Nick Walsh inside. We'll set the clock for 60 seconds. And we'll go from there. Investment needs, stop by Seth Q on Hillsley Street in Troy or on campus here at the Rensselaer Union. Ten seconds. Three, two, one. Time's up. Thank you, Nick Walsh, for participating in tonight's FQ Money Machine Money Grab. We'll count up what you have in your fists. You'll get to keep it. SefQ will match it and donate it to a charity. Thank you, SefQ. Hey, if you're thinking of buying or selling a home, contact Jolene Morris with the Brewer Morris team at Howard Hanna Real Estate Services at 518-331-1579. The top sales team in Rensselaer County. So let Jolene's expertise move you.
PRPI Pip Band. Ryan's Wake, proud to support RPI Athletics. After the game, head downtown Troy and check out the, the brand new spanking pub kitchen at Ryan's Wake. RPI Hockey would like to thank GE, Moe's, SEPQ, CDPHP, Boucher and Clark Financial Group, Market 32 by Price Chopper, Yankee Trails, Red Front Pizza, Tri-City Rentals, Duncan, Toyota, CDTA, Bespoke Bowl, McGaddy's Pub, Slide and Dirty, Ben and Jerry's, Warren W. Fane, Boucher and Clark Benefits, Wicked Smart, Gatherers Granola, Fryhoffers, Little Caesars Pizza, Howard Hanna Realty, the RPI Chapel and Cultural Center, H2M Architects and Engineers, and Tri-City Valley Cats, all proud sponsors of RPI Hockey. So Kurt doesn't think it's happened since 92, and I'm inclined to believe Kurt. So I guess uh, the hockey gods give, and then they, they take back uh, a good number of years later. Anyway, so McDonald's scoring for his credit for the goal. It came at 6.50 of the first period. 
Uh, then Jacob Hayhurst for RPI scoring his second goal of the year. A nice give and go with Otto Vilay Lepinen and Jacob Laka. That tied the game at 16-34. Both even straight goals. Just one power play in the game belongs to RPI. They did not have a shot on that man advantage. The shots overall are 14 to 6. I said 14-7 before. That was incorrect. Faceoffs so far are 11-6 Lowell. The engineers won the faceoff battle. I'm fairly certain last time around. It's not listed here. They were they were winning the faceoff battle last I checked on Friday. Savory 13 stops in the first period. Tyler Wall. No, he should not. Oh, Savory should not uh, be credited with a goal against there. It should be an empty net goal. So that'll have to be changed. Luckily, I know the people who are in charge of that. Action has begun here in the second period. 1 1 game. Puck flipped through the crease to the near side of the RPI zone. Otto Ville Lapinen on for Waka. Tried to feed it across for Hayers. Bouncing puck top of the zone. Uh, Hayers touched it around the defender. Uh, McDonald, but then uh, couldn't find it on the other side. It would have been a fancy bit of stick work. Back comes Lowell. And Domowski, no. That one slid wide of the net in the end by Levesque into the far corner. Wrapped up there. Played behind for Riley. And now it's Laka. Back to Riley, who skates down the near side, lobs it high in the air over Wall, comes down off the end boards. Gathered in by the River Hawks. Poked up by San out of play. One minute into the third period. Engineers and Lowell all square at one apiece. Shots leaders for Lowell. Ryan Lowen has three. And Jacob Laka has a couple of shots. He has an assist, as does his classmate Lepin, and so at least a point a game for Laka in his first four contests for the Engineers. He played in the first two against uh, uh, Massachusetts Amherst, so his career has only been uh, played against Massachusetts State Schools. So maybe that's the ticket. I don't know. Anyway, puck out to center for Burgess. He'll flip it back in. Left behind by Gorenson for Barton. Now O'Neill has some trouble with it along the wall in his own zone, but he works it back, and now Master in near side. Master fed through the slot to the far side. Throwing a hit there was Polino. And now Polino and Barton dig away on the far side corner. Comes free to Barton. He'll turn and cycle. Throws it through his teammate in the end, Wilson, and it comes around to the near side. Burgess waiting for it. Finds it on the backhand, lifts it through center. Polino tried to chop it down, but it works his way all the way through. Shot back in. This should be icing, although it's played by Savory. Maybe he knew that it wasn't. Something I didn't see. Tipped in deep. That was, I believe, touched by Blackman, so no icing on the other end. And now played back to center. Gathered up here. Lowen to the near side. Avoiding a hit there was Blackman. Puck goes to Ferner. Ferner up the boards, trying to find a whiff. And now back comes Lowen with a two-on-one down low. Shot goes way wide from Lowen. Gathered up on the far side of the RPI zone. Ahead for Whiffen. Whiffen tries to push it past his man. Dis gets it by Baxter. And then Baxter cuts him off. Blackman in the near corner of his own zone for Lowell. Two and a half into the second period. A 1-1 game. Engineers looking for the weekend sweep. Although these two teams, of course, had yesterday off. But uh, we'll still call it such. Kind of the odd scheduling on this Thanksgiving weekend. Helped into the zone by Whiffen on the dump and now played around by Baxter for Knobloch touch pass here up ice comes Austin O'Rourke who did not also play on Friday he and uh, Chris Schutz the two Lowell players are inserted in the lineup for the first time now a backdoor feed looking for O'Rourke the freshman from Canton Georgia and that can't find him the engineer is cleared out to center Fed along the far side, broken up by Burke. Touching up was Linden. Burke one-hands it into the far corner. He'll try and chase it down. He runs into McDonald there. Shot around to the near side. Laboring over to pick it up is Baxter. He'll lob it up the near side boards. 
Loose puck at center. McDonald's going to get there first. Trying to play it on for Knobloch, and the Knobloch had to wait for it. I think he might have put shut, uh, shuts offside. Either way, a stoppage. Fans and a draw coming up outside the RPI 50 -50 zone. 16 20 to go. In period number two. And they thank you for your support. Picked up there by uh, Hallbauer behind the net. Takes a hit, but spins off it and moves it up the far side. Hallbauer carrying on through, takes a hit. Puck goes into the zone. Uh, someone lost their stick. It looks like it was Levesque. He goes back to pick it up. Now it's underneath him, the puck, as he takes a tumble. It'll be Lowell to center into the feet of Sodergren. He does enough to get it deep. It'll wrap around. Now Levesque behind the goal, makes a move, trying to get away from his man. Around to the near side, half wall, soldered into the point. Dorenson, back door, nice stop by Savory. Another shot off the crossbar. Domowski was denied twice, once by the engineer's freshman netminder and then by the bar. This one lobbed up the near side, kept in by Sorensen, but throws it right onto the tape of Hayhurst, who turns back to safety of his own end. Now he'll use the net as a screen. Domowski pressured for a bit, but now he goes off on a change. Slapped along up the boards looking for Ott. Ott in deep. First one to it. Baxter. He'll whack it around to the near half wall. Wilson. Far side connection to O'Neill. O'Neill off the shin pad of Riley into the near corner it goes. And now played behind the cage. Master. Good poke check by Johnson to separate him. And now they go hard into the far corner. Johnson trying to kick it out. And they eventually find Riley. He turns back to the far side. Johnson over to get it. Poked on further, but intercepted by O'Neill. He'll throw it to the near side where Riley's waiting for it. RPI looks to break out as backing off a little bit here. UMass Lowell. Good connection to Jerry near side. He enters the zone, stops at the point. He'll sweep it down low. Burgess. He runs hard into the end boards, trying to throw a centering feed as he was uh, all tied up with McDonald, but still got the pass away, although it was intercepted in the end. Now back comes O'Neill. O'Neill lobs it up the far side board. Samick over to pick it up for the Engineers. Junior from St. Paul, Minnesota. Samick stops behind the net. And as still has a man on his back, it's Kanata. Or Kanata, rather. Still Samick on the carry. He'll back one on goal, or backhand one on goal. Wall thought about leaving the side. But it ends up holding on here. Shots are 15 to 7 Lowell in a 1-1 game. 14-10 to go in the second. You are listening to live coverage of RPI Hockey on 91.5 FM. WRPI Troy. Faceoff coming up in the Lowell zone. Puck just sits on the dot. Finally picked away by the Riverhawks. And they move it out. Barisha far side. We get a whistle here, and we're going to get, uh, I think, matching penalties. Kandata and Whiffen were tied up on that faceoff. I think we're going to play four on four. As uh, I think that's the case here. Put him in separately. Brian, put him in separately. 14 minutes exactly to go in the period. And it's going to be Whiffen and uh, Lucas Condotta, freshman from Georgetown, Ontario. Penalties. So a couple of Ontario boys in the box. Brooke Whiffen out of St. Mary. Of the second period. We'll play four on four for a full two minutes. To Lowell's number 24, Lucas Johnson Kandata. off the draw. Engineers win it. Two minutes. He gets wrapped up trying to walk his way four up ice. RPI fans want a penalty. They're going to get it here. It's going to be a hook on Knobloch. Whiffen receives two minutes for cross-checking. Could have been either one. He shakes his head. Six minutes. He was caught behind Johnson, and Johnson was trying to skate away from him. Could have easily been a hook as a whole, but anyway, our guy's going to go into power play for the second time. So it was a, it was a cross Low check on Whitman. to number four, Sam Nadlock. He receives two minutes for holding. Time in penalty, six minutes, nine seconds. For Lowell Navarro, on a hold at 6.09. It's an E. Stewart Jones Packer power play for the engineer. So the power play will come up in a moment. 
Nine seconds into the, or eight seconds, I guess, into the four on fours. It'll be four on three, which has to, I think, be a little bit of a benefit to the, the team on the power play as opposed to a five on four. Obviously, there are fewer total skaters on the ice. And, uh, and that means one fewer defender. I think in any sport, the, the fewer number of uh, skaters you have out there are players on the field or ice surface. The, obviously, the, uh, the ratio favors the team with the fewer total number of players. I did a horrible job explaining that, but that's okay. Anyway, the important matter is RPI in a tie game will have a four on three power play for two minutes. Or for a minute 52. <laughs> Almost a full two minutes. Hayers to take the draw here up against Levesque. Puck played to Hayers in front. Hayers trying to take a shot, but Levesque cries it away from him. Now he's one-on-one -on -one with Hallbauer. The last man back for RPI. Hallbauer steals it away and gets as far as center ice. It's stolen back by Laka. Across for Hayhurst. What a group for the engineers to have out there right now. Hayers into the circle. Across. It'll be slowed up there by Polino. And now Hallbauer. Polino up top. Hayers fakes a shot. Near side Hallbauer. Cross ice feed into the, some skates. It's cleared out there. The three penalty killers for Lowell get a change. Four on three is a minute 15 on it for RPI. As Savory leaves it aside for Will Riley. Now it's Riley Burgess. Polino. And as Polino steps off with uh, Lepinen and Johnson. Nice little saucer pass far side. One timer and they score! Burgess says, let's go! It's a 2-1 RPI lead and a power play goal for Todd Burgess. That's how you execute. You take advantage of the extra man. It's Burgess is absolutely fired up here. And scoring his second goal on the season. Just his third career goal. And it was a great initial pass, and then a looked like a blind little backhand saucer feed from Lepin, and you don't get much prettier than that. Two passes to set up that goal. The one into the zone, I don't know which one's more impressive, to be perfectly honest with you. The pass into the zone, or the one to find Burgess for the one-time smash. Two to one engineers. And that'll end the power play, of course. 54 seconds of four on four time. Fed across to McDonald. McDonald to Rister. Looking for the he redirection that didn't come. Housinger got a little bit too much of it. Now like Grant playing without a stick. Trying to walk his way in as Housinger. Around the net he goes. To the far side. Kind of a four on three and a half power play right now for RPI. Johnson trying to clear. He'll shoot it down, but the engineers don't mind the icing if it is one. And it is. Polino trying to beat out uh, Blackman. But... Uh, Johnson, uh, or Grant was playing without his stick, so it was uh, four on four, but Johnson being the defenseman there and couldn't do a whole much to slow down Housinger. Grant now has a new stick. Actually, it looks like he, did he break it? I can't tell. He wouldn't have got a new one anyway. Grant, that is, senior captain of Sparta, New Jersey. Anyway, 12.23 uh, to go in the second. Two to one is the RPI lead. Second straight game with a power play goal. They were one for two. Engineers were on Friday with Jacob Laka scoring. And here it's Todd Burgess with a man advantage tally. Seven seconds left of four on four. Into the zone comes Polino. His shot up in the air and out of play. Two seconds left in the four on four. We'll have a draw coming up in the Lowell zone. Pretty easy to score that one. If you're the engineers, it was Burgess. Uh, from Lepinen and I believe Riley. I said it was easy the night. Went and forgot the secondary assist. It was a great pass, though. Uh, we'll, we'll find out who it is, and I'll tell you. Oh. Uh, now Tommy Lee's stick goes flying. Poke checked by Samick at center. Loose puck gathered in by Lee. He's got a new one immediately. That's Dana McGuane, folks. Left along to the near side, Lee off the near side towards Gorenson. Redirected just wide. What a chance there. Connor Sodergren with a great redirection. He just missed, I think by less than a foot of that far post. As Lowell nearly converts. Now a cross ice feed from Ferner was partially deflected. And now it's gloved out of the zone by Lee. Broken up by Gorenson. And now we're going to get a whistle. 
Well, I don't think it was a hand pass, but Phil Kitchen is in the of the opinion that it was. I thought it hit one of the low. I thought one of the low players played the puck after Lee gloved it. But uh, I think that's the argument here. That's not. I don't think it was a hand pass. It it was clearly gloved out of the zone by Lee. But then I think a Lowell player played the puck. But I'm not going to get too bent out of shape about it if it didn't happen. Hey, RPI TV folks going to get a chance to. Hey, if you're telling me Gorenson didn't play that puck, then I guess you're right. Anyway, RPI clears it out. This might be icing. As it's a race for it, and it will be icing on the engineers. It's not going to make these RPI fans any happier about the, the hand pass. But I digress. Shots are 15 8. Lowell with 11 15 to go in the second period. You're listening to live coverage of RPI Hockey, 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy. Afternoon hockey here at the Houston Fieldhouse, where the engineers lead 2 to 1. Goals from Jacob Laka. And Todd Burgess, a four on three power play marker for the engineers, looking for the weekend sweep of these Riverhawks. Glove down, and then a collision there. Moving along is Ott, who gives a little bit of a spray to Wall. There's an engineer who's slow back to the bench. It was Tommy Lee. He's on the positive side of things, he was up quickly, but it looks like he may have hurt his shoulder. Tara Patton out over. The trainer to speak with him took it a, a nasty little spill in front of the RPI bench. We all hope uh, Lee's all right. Face off in the Lowell zone puck played behind the net. RPI's uh, lightning in a bottle group out there right now that top line flowing trying to center good skate. That was Laka got in the way of that pass. Still behind the goal, however. Riverhawks on the move. Far side. Wrapped up the wall. Now back in deep for Lowen. Lowen's going to pick it up at the far point now. Backdoor feed intercepted by Lepinen. Trying to move quickly. Laka on for Hayhurst. Hayhurst a partial break. Backhand. Forehand. Saved by Wall. It was a good defensive effort to impede Hayhurst into the zone. As it wasn't a clean breakaway, but he had a half step on the defenseman. And I think it was Barton who was able to slow him up in the end. Kanata, or Kandata, I should say, for Lowell sending a shot in. Pad saved by uh, Savory. And the rebound popped into the high slot, but the engineers are able to sweep it out. Now Burgess trying to play it back for Ott. Gloved down by Kandata. Kandata up the far side boards. Chopped at by Johnson. Carried on further by Kandata. That'll be a hand pass. <laughs> and now the RPI fans are cheering for Phil Kitchen. That's uh, that's the life of a referee or linesman for you. He, Kitchen was the uh, the butt end of some of that booing that we heard moments ago after fans thought that the hand pass was wrongly called against the engineers and then you have a, a hand pass against Lowell and Phil Kitchen is back on the side of these RPI faithful is a Folks who are watching Enjoy this one on RPI TV and a chance to take a look at that uh, chance for Hayhurst. He was wrapped up. It was Barton doing the defending. He did just enough. When you're a defenseman in that spot, you're you're in a tough spot. A lot of times you're going to take a penalty if you do a little bit too much of uh, impeding using your stick. But Barton used just enough of his stick, and to his credit, he was moving his feet, and that's also important in that situation. If you're caught just reaching with your stick, you're going to get called every time. But if you're there and you're moving your feet and trying to get back into position, then a lot of times you can get away with a little bit of a hook or a little bit of a, a whack of the stick. That's what Barton was able to do. Good offense, good defense. Engineer's still up. Two to one, 9.58 to go in the second period. One goal in the frame belongs to Todd Burgess on a well executed, really, an entry into the zone. Back to back saucer passes found Burgess in the far circle to smash it by wall. As Lowell breaks out of their own zone O'Neill wraps it around puck comes free to the far side gathered in there by Morello Morello gives it away O'Neill walking in and he scores. Tie game 2 2. 
Colin O'Neill, the junior from Odenton, Maryland, picks up his second goal on the season and RPI with its first real mistake of this game. Jake Morello I tried to stick handle out of the zone and O'Neill, who has now 11 career goals, uh, able to bury that one. Savory got a piece of it, but uh, when you're point blank uh, in that spot, oh. tough to keep it out. Now a quick shot hammered wide, hits off the end boards in RPI territory, knocked down by Johnson, picked up by Lee. Lee throws a cross ice pass that's nearly picked by Domowski, but now Riley back the other way, throws it through all the way to the far side wall. Johnson takes a shot from the blue line, covered up by Wall, who's a skipping shot in that uh, Wall was able to knock down and then cover. And we get a stoppage here. 9.24 to go. Lowell's tied things up. 2-2. And the engineers will look to find some more magic. And this top group, which is, hasn't been together too often, Leppin and Hayhurst and, of course, Laka, the final piece that RPI is hoping and generates more offense here. And they're out there now for the offensive zone draw, although it's Lowell who wins it, moves it out to center. Back in off of Leppin and Skate. He'll sweep it in deep. Laka on the chase. McDonald wraps it around far side. Kandata to center ice. Stepping in is Harris. Stolen away by Lowen. Stolen back by Harris. Harris gets it back from uh, Harris into the zone. Harris a shot. Stick save. Wrapped around to the far side. Half boards. Flip back down low by Hayhurst. On for Laka. Laka tried to play the point. Intercepted and moved out by Lucas Kandata. He gets as far as center. Puck comes free to the far side. Moved in by Hausinger. Hausinger with a good poke check by Harris. Stays on the puck, however. Shoots it around to the near side. Pinching in was Sawchuk. He'll whack it down low. Letting it run was Hausinger. And then out to center ice it goes. Right across the line. Played there by Blackman. Blackman gives it right to Hayhurst. Turns it back towards his own end. He'll play it around behind the goal. Rolling puck will be settled down by Ferner. Ferner wires one up the ice and hit the skate of Sawchuk. Goes in deep, so no icing. And now jumping on it, Ott. He'll lift it into the corner and chase it down himself behind the net. Donovan Ott trying to move it out of the corner. The sophomore from Lebanon, PA. Behind the goal, strong on the puck is Ott. To the side of the cage it goes. O'Neill helps it to the near corner. Wilson now for Lowell. And now Ott again trying to center. Jerry picks it up in the far circle. Back to the point for Hallbauer. He'll flip it right back down low. Donovan Ott there. Centering pass right out in front. A stop by Wall on Jerry. Now Hallbauer, a wrister that goes wide. Burgess back to the point. Here's Tommy Grant across for Hallbauer calling for it. He'll spin it right back down low. Good pressure from this third unit for RPI. Trying to clear it out near side. Grant pinches, can't keep it in the zone. Now Master one-on-one -on -one with Hallbauer. Stands him up and steals the puck away. Now Hallbauer on the carry. Down the middle of the ice. Hallbauer one-on-one. -on -one. He'll spin around as he runs into Gorenson. And he just works it down low. Now Polino. Polino to the top of the circle. He gets upended and he looks to be uh, a little bit uh, weary as he gets up. And skates back into the play. Puck in the far side. Intercepted by Polino. Just got back into the zone. Ahead for Riley out of his reach. Gathered up by Gorenson. Tie up along the near side boards. Whiffin. He'll carry it in. Under 6.50 to go in the second. 2-2 game. RPI and UMass Lowell. Center ice, skips by Riley, it goes back to pick it up. He's being pressured now by O'Rourke. Big hit behind the goal, puck comes free to Morello, and now carried on further by Whiffin. He runs into a couple of River Hawks, and the puck comes loose to uh, Polino. He'll shoot it off the boards and out to center. Bounding into the Lowell zone, they quickly turn it around. Levesque, far side for Austin O'Rourke. O'Rourke looking for the backdoor feed, and uh, that one just didn't work out looking for uh, shots. And now here's Burke up the near side wall. Linden trying to track it down in front of his own bench. He'll fire it in deep behind the goal for Wall. Wall stops it there, left along, uh, lifted along by McDonald. And now moved up the far side board. Samick can't keep it in. Whacked into the RPI zone where it's tracked down by Ferner. Ferner up the near side on the indirect, finds Burke who chips it on further. 
First one to it, Austin, or Anthony Baxter, as Burke throws his body into Baxter. Puck comes free to Ferner. Ferner across. Samick Arister. That one's right on, and a save by Wall, as Burke was trying to get a tip on it. I don't think he did. Would have made it much more difficult for the junior netminder, Wall, to track and try to hold. But he held that one cleanly with the glove. 540 left second period. 2-2 game. UMass Lowell has come back to tie this one after the engineers took their first lead of the game at 2-1 earlier in the period. A goal by Todd Burgess, a power play goal. Haven't had a lot, whole lot going on penalty-wise. We had the two uh, coincidental minors that uh, made it four on four. Then the immediate Penalty on Knobloch for holding. Gave RPI its second power play chance of the night first of the period. RPI was able to capitalize. So no power play so far for Lowell. And while they did go 0 for 4 last night, they did have seven shots and looked pretty dangerous on the man advantage. But when it comes to things like special teams, uh, that's what, uh, what that's what matters most is the, the results there. And uh, engineers able to get the job done. Face-offs is are 20 to 12 in favor of UMass Lowell. There's uh, shots in this one. Could almost tell you that. Shots are 17 to 13. Riverhawks, shots attempted, 31-23. RPI has blocked seven shots, Lowell's blocked five. We are back to action here after our final media stoppage of the period. Lobbed out to center ice, Riley tries to glove it down. He'll spin it right down the middle where it's picked off by Kandata. And then they're offside of the line as Hausinger was uh, on his behind as he crossed the blue line. I don't think he went offside on purpose. He got tangled up there with Riley. Last home game for a while for the Engineers. I think they're next at home against Army on January 5th. Of course, you throw in the holiday break there as well. Yep. January the 5th. It's a Saturday. RPI hosting Army here at the Houston Fieldhouse after traveling to Harvard the night before for a 7.30 puck drop against the Crimson. That's a league game. And of course, Army non-league. Now, a giveaway there and a shot right on from Lowen who had more time than I think he realized. He could have walked that puck in. Grant was kind of fading away. And it was a Another defensive zone giveaway, something we've seen the engineers do a good job uh, of not doing, giving the puck away in their own zone. But uh, for the second time this period, that time it nearly cost them like it did the first. Still 2 2, and now Hayers gets tossed from the dot. RPI's best faceoff man came into the weekend at nearly 57%. Now Laka in to take it. I'm surprised Lepin didn't sign in there because I think it was 4 0 on Friday. Stepping in for Hayhurst, who was tossed from a number of draws on Friday in Lowell. Chipped in deep. Laka's over there to try and track it down. He gets bumped by Barton. And it comes loose near side for Wilson. Cross ice feed to O'Neill. O'Neill crosses the red line, chips it in on the backhand before he takes one up high from Hallbauer. Puck in the far corner, right in front of where the Zamboni enters the ice here. Under five to play in the second, a 2 2 game. O'Neill at the far half wall, cycling down low for Master, steals it away as Hallbauer thought he'd come away with it. Now a shot by Gorenson's blocked by Laka. Second try also blocked by Jacob Laka. And now stolen away for a moment by Hallbauer, but Wilson jumps back on it. Master, tight angle. I guess it turned into a pass. It was Baxter pinching in. He'll spin it down low. Far side corner. Hayhurst has his man wrapped up. Lifted out to center ice by Lepinen. And the engineers will get a partial change here as Gorenson's back to play. He took his eye off it for a moment. Goes back to pick it up. Up the far side boards comes Domowski. Senior out of East Lime, Connecticut. It'll wrap around to the near side. And now behind the goal, Billy Jerry. Former Madison Capital out of River Falls, Wisconsin. He'll work it all the way up the boards. Taken right back, however, by the Riverhawks down the middle. Levesque. On the move, it takes a little bit of a hip check from Johnson. And Jake Johnson trying to finish him off. 
forces him past it, and then Johnson will lift it towards the line. Glove down by Baxter. And helped out by Jerry on the backhand. Too far for Ott. Gathered him in again by McDonald. Puck at the low blue line. Carried around uh, far side by Baxter into the zone. Domowski to the near side corner. O'Rourke. He gets hit by Ott. Puck goes behind the goal. Domowski takes a hit from Riley. Gets away. And now cycles for Knobloch. Knobloch centering pass right through O'Rourke. Might have handcuffed him a bit. Pass might have been in his skates a little more than he had wanted for the left-hand shot. Dumped back in by Lowell. Savory going to lob it around the glass to the far side point where it's kept in. Ice tilted a bit in Lowell's favor as that centering pass is knocked down by the stick of Savory and helped behind by Jerry. Back to the near point, Blackman. Wrist shot coming. That hit a body in front around to the near corner. This group a little bit tired there for RPI. Looking to try and get a change and then get off the ice. Knobloch trying to track it down, just couldn't find the puck. Now we'll take a wrist shot and Savory makes a stop but doesn't hold it with a glove. Far side trying to jam it in. And it's behind the cage. Back to the point. Faking a shot there was Barisha. Barisha gets it back. He'll take the shot this time. Hit his own man. It caught Knobloch in a bad spot on the wrist it looked like. He heads back to the bench. And now Lee to center. RPI looked to get a must needed change here. Although Lee can't get it deep. RPI does get a couple, uh, couple guys off the ice. The shot back in by the Riverhawks. 2.20 to go now in the second. In a 2-2 game. Back to the point now. Gorenson can't keep the zone. It's back out to center. He plays catch with Baxter. Back to the near side. Gorenson. Cross ice feet off the boards. Jumping on it here. Walking out in front. A right pad stopped there by Savory. And the rebound's put through the crease behind him by Lowen. And now another shot comes wide from the far point. Owen oh, Savory with maybe his best see, uh, save as a collegiate goaltender. Sticking out that right leg to deny Hausinger. Now a shot comes in, blocked down by the engineers, and Harris going to carry it out towards center. His pass off the mark, and RPI uh, feeling it here now from the Riverhawks. Low and a shot, saved by Savory, and the rebound's chipped to the near side corner. 135 to go in the period. RPI looking like it's just trying to get there right now with this one tied 2-2. As the puck is between some skates in the near corner, Whiffin finally dug out by Gorenson. He drops it back. A slamming shot there from Wilson that goes wide. May have caught the glove of Savory. Kandata around the goal, trying to wrap around, and Lowen has his stick tied up. Gorenson feeds it through, and they score. Uh, seemingly an inevitable goal there as Connor Wilson finishes it off in the far circle. RPI was on its heels really for the last two, three minutes there. Couldn't get out of their own zone the one time they did. They did get a partial change. I don't think everybody got off. And uh, Wilson's able to finish his fourth goal of the season. And Lowell with its second lead of the game. Remember, they led 1-0 very early on. A little bit of fluky play there. But uh, the senior Wilson... Finishes off the one-timer. Kind of a seeing-eye pass. There were a couple of players tied up in the low slot. Lowen and whoever was uh, defending him. I think it was Whiffen. But that pass just found its way all the way across. And now some discussion here between Dave Smith and one of the officials. I can't see who. Lowell back in front with 107 to play in the second period. I think we're going to drop the puck here. I'm not sure. There's more discussion between the officials now. But right after Savory made that stop, you think maybe the engineers are going to get away with this uh, pressure they had taken on. But... Uh, not the case as Lowell, as they may have just iced it here off the draw, they have just enough on that one. It almost stopped just on the other side of the end line. Lowell does convert an even strength goal to make it three to two. 55.1 left in the second. Draw coming up in the Riverhawk zone. Dave Smith still yelling something, I, I think. The referees on the near side here, up, the, up to the scorer's booth. 
I'll, I'll find out between periods if I can what uh, was being discussed here. Because I'm not sure what it is. There, well, they put six seconds back on the clock, five seconds back on the clock. All right. Riley off the draw, takes a wrist shot that goes just high and wide. And it would have been interesting if RPI had scored on that shot because the Riley goal, if it would have gone in, would have been technically before the go ahead goal, which would have been really odd. We have to do some manipulation of time there. Scoring the tying goal before the go ahead goal. But anyway. It didn't go in. 32 seconds left in the period. On comes Domowski. He'll shoot it in. Samick behind the cage. Grant has his man pinned up. 22 seconds left in the period. Samick there. Up the near side for Lepinin. He'll turn back uh, towards his own near corner. Give himself some time and space. And now Hayhurst crossing center, but he shoots it out of play. And we have a stoppage here and a faceoff coming with 9.5 seconds left. In the second period, 3-2 Lowell leads. RPI trailed 1-0 early on. They got a tying goal lead in the first and went ahead in the second. A goal by Todd Burgess, a power play goal, but then the Riverhawks tied it up on a defensive zone giveaway by RPI. And then the plenty of pressure over the last three, four, maybe even five minutes of this second all culminated in a low goal. This is shot in by Grant wide of the cage. Wrapped up the far side board. Pass Samick with one. And that'll do it for the second period. 3-2 Lowell's. We go to the third. Engineers looking for a tying goal once again. Shots 22-13. Uh, Riverhawks in the faceoffs 23-15 Lowell. Just the one power play. Goal scored and RPI's two chances. No penalties taken by the engineers so far through 40 minutes. Uh, I spoke with uh, Noah Siegel, the RPI uh, Hockey Ops coordinator, and he's in charge of the uh, in charge of the analytic data that is uh, compiled and used by the coaching staff. And a uh, you know, pretty lengthy conversation. Uh, we'll have that for you in its entirety here. Uh, coming up right now, your score. After two periods of play, once again, is level three and RPI two. You're listening to live coverage of RPI Hockey, 91.5 FM, WRPI, Troy. We invite you to remain in your seats for the Duncan Espresso shot of the game. Direct your attention to center ice. Time for the Duncan Espresso shot of the game. Please welcome Ben Salislav, who will be taking a shot from the red line to win $25 in Duncan gift cards. Let's give him a little encouragement. Oh, just a bit wide. Tell you what, Duncan is going to give him a gift card anyway for trying tonight. Card can be used to try the new handcrafted espresso drinks available at participating Duncan locations. Stop by your nearest Duncan location, try the new handcrafted espresso drinks featuring a rich spoon, balanced taste. Sipping is believing. RPI hockey runs on Duncan. Hey fans, now it's time for the Chunk of Puck contest. Duncan is proud to sponsor that as well this evening. Person whose puck lands close to center ice wins a prize from Duncan. So if you got him, let's chuck him in three, two, one, chuck your pucks.
The puck that ends up closest to center ice will win a prize from Duncan. Let's pick a winner. Tonight's Chuck a Puck contest. Hey, we'd like to remind you, Hudson Mohawk Figure Skating Club is in its 67th year of offering learn to skate classes right here at Houston Fieldhouse on Saturday mornings. Classes are for all ages. For more information, check out the program at hmfsc.org.
the RPI Pep Band. RPI would like to thank the following sponsors, the Rensselaer Alumni Association, Nigro Companies, Patterson, Sampson, Ginsburg and Griffin Law Firm, Bellini's Counter, Sodexo, the Hilton Garden Inn Troy, National Grid Foundation, Turner Construction, the Desmond Hotel, Reifenberg Construction, the Recovery Sports Grill, E. Stewart Jones Hacker and Murphy, Stanley Steamer, Stewart's Shops, BSN Sports, Nigro Companies, Rensselaer Honda, Repeat Business Systems, and RPI's Off-Campus Housing and Correct Energy. All proud sponsors of RPI Hockey. Hey fans, head to the Hill at Musa this weekend. The Hill is a beer garden and European staycation. Enjoy beverages and small plates. The Hill, 379 Congress Street, Troy. Gates open at 4 p.m. That was uh, that's that was RPI, RPI men's hockey uh, will take on Army West Point hockey on operations Saturday, January 5th. Noah Siegel as we get set for uh, period number three here. UMass Lowell on top by a 3-2 score. Attendance tonight 2,379. Thanks to Jeff Morris for sending that over. As always, St uh, let's get to the stats through two. First, the scoring rundown. John McDonald opened things with a puck uh, shot. He didn't even shoot the puck. Came off an RPI stick from the offensive zone into a RPI's own empty net on a delayed penalty. And then, uh, so John McDonald credited with that goal. Of course, no assist. Can we 
granted on a play like that. It's just the last low player to touch the puck gets the goal. Then at 1634 of the first period, RPI tied it up. Jacob Hayhurst from Otto Ville Lepinen and Jacob Laka. First collegiate assist for Laka, the second goal of the season for Hayhurst, made it 1 1. Burgess, uh, Todd Burgess gave RPI the lead on the power play at eight, seven minutes even of the second from Lepinen and Will Riley. So it was Riley who made that first pass. Uh, a beautiful play all the way around. But then Lowell drew even at 10-15. Colin O'Neill, an unassisted goal memory, stole that puck away uh, off of Morello and scored his second goal this season. And then Connor Wilson at 18-53 of the second gave Lowell the lead for the second time tonight. Matthias Gorenson and Ryan Lowen with the assist there. Shots are 22-13 Lowell after two. Power plays, RPI one for two, just one power play shot, but they scored. And of course, Lowell has not gone on the man advantage yet. Face-offs are 23-15. Lowell, Charlie Levesque is 9-3 on the draw. Tour Linen for RPI is 5-2 in the face-off circle. We're ready for period number three here. Hope you're ready. However, you're taking this one in, WRPI or the simulcast on RPI TV. Either way. Coming to you live and free here from Troy, New York. Lobbed in by Otto Ville Lampinen. And the engineers try to go in on the attack now. Near side corner, Lampinen. Back towards the point, picked off by Levesque. Played far side for Domowski. Domowski steps around Riley into the zone. He goes down. Shot comes in around behind the goal to the near side. Hayhurst there. Awkward hit on his man. Puck comes free, and now Hayhurst has it. Cross ice out in front of Laka. He'll poke it in deep. Jacob Laka around the net. Throws it to the backside where it's played by Baxter. Nearly intercepted there by Lepinen, but whack to the near side now out to center ice. All the way down. And this should be icing here on Lowell, and it will be. So this group, which started the period, I guess only 47 seconds have gone by, but Lowell not allowed to change. Our guy has its, its uh, third unit out there actually now to match up. Early third period, 3-2 is the Lowell lead. Riverhawks trying to earn a split of the weekend series. A non-league one, but well, series on the last. Puck shot in, now Lowell will get their change. Kyle Halbauer to play, freshman out of uh, Howell, New Jersey. Former Lone Star Brahma. Is that the singular for Brahmas? I don't know. I'm going to go with it. Puck in the RPI zone. Picked up uh, by Burgess. He'll skate back towards the near corner. Shoot it off the glass to center. Shot back in by Barton. Chopped at by Hallbauer. Further up the wall into the skates. A master who keeps it alive and shoots it right back around. Ring to the near side corner. Dropped to the point. Goes through O'Neill. May have taken eye off, his eye off that one and all the way down the ice. It was from a Lowell stick, so of course no icing infraction here. Waiting behind his own goal, Matthias Gorenson, junior from Slotsbron, Sweden. Gets it as far as the RPI line where it's picked away by Wiffen. Now Polino to the near side for Samick. Samick up the boards. Pass Wiffen. It'll be gloved down and ahead by Lowen. Lowen takes a hit from Polino into the zone, but gets it deep. Ferner thought about playing it behind, but ends up trying the near side into the skates of Polino. Shoved right back into the corner. Ferner over to get it there. Back to Polino. Polino going to turn it back uh, up ice, but it's played in further by Lowell. Now it's gloved down by Lee. Trying to help it up the wall. Right back to Samick. It goes instead. Near side Ferner. RPI. So try to break out of their own zone here. 17-24 to go in the third period. Down by a goal. Tipped along nicely by Polino. Turns out on goal. And Wall didn't handle it as well as you might expect. But gets it on a danger into the corner. Barisha up the far side boards and all the way down. Matt Harris back to get it. Left there by Savory. Oh, and Savory making his second collegiate start tonight. He won on Friday 2-1 to one against these same Riverhawks. Big hit on Harris. Puck comes free to center, but a good read by Lepinen to help out defensively and gather in the neutral zone. Now Riley up ahead off a skate. Picked up near side 
by Sodergren into the zone. Levac, his pass broken up and sent back to center where the Riverhawks regather. The defenseman, John McDonald, will shoot it in. Wrapping all the way around. And now Hayhurst in. Stick handling high slot. Now on his backhand, far circle gets tripped up. Going to draw a penalty. And RPI going back on the man advantage. Hayhurst. I don't have the numbers for you, but I... I can pretty much bet he's drawn more penalties on the other team than he's taken. And that a good example of that. He walked along the top of the zone. And a little bit too aggressive with the stick was Ryan Domowski. And he goes off for the trip. 16-29 to play in the third. 3-2 was the low lead. RPI 1-4-2 on the man advantage tonight. Face-off win for Lowell, clearing effort down the middle all the way down off the stick of Gorenson. Sabre's going to leave it behind the cage for Riley. And now Riley near side. Lee moving it in. He'll fire it all the way around. Gorenson stops it. Gloved no. Thought Riley might have got his glove on it, but it was over him. And back down on the clearance. Minute 33 on this third RPI power play. Under 16 to go now in the third period. Engineers trail by one. Here's Riley. Drops it off for Lepinen. Lepinen will lob it into the air on the back end to the far corner. Stops up there. Hayhurst has his man pinned up, wrapped around to the near side. Engineers trying to get set up on the power play. Now they maybe can. Near side half wall. Polino holding up top. Skips through Hallbauer and out to center. Not sure who to fault there. Pass looked okay. Hallbauer may have taken his eye off of it. Now it's shot near side, skipping on Polino. That allows Lowell to clear back to center again. Hallbauer. On it. Down the middle for Lepinen. Stick handling near side. He'll chip it in and try and chase on his own. Sodergren going to wrap it far side. And it cannot be kept by Polino. And a chance to break shorthanded. Two on two. Sodergren with Lowen. Looking for the backdoor feed for Lowen. That didn't work out. Comes free to the far side for Gorenson. And now it's... Uh, a chance in front, although not a great one for Lowen, who now wants a change. Engineers trying to skate, trying to catch him the other way. Polino drops it off near side for Lapinen. Back up top for Polino. 21 to go on the power play. Worked up the wall for Hayhurst. Hayhurst trying to get away from Levesque. Far side connection. Hallbauer. Hallbauer back to Hayhurst. Hayhurst a wrister and a right pad stopped there by Wall. And it'll be cleared out and down. That should all but do it for this power play. Engineers took a while to get it set up. They finally got a decent shot. Uh, but uh, Hall, uh, Wall, excuse me, made the save. Out of the box is Domowski. We're back to five on five as Burke goes speeding ahead down the middle. Jaron Burke trying to stick handle, lost it there, and it's out of the zone. Ferner with a touch, and this very well could have been an intentional offside there on RPI, but we're only uh, what, 30 years into me watching the sport, and I still don't know entirely when they're going to call it. The assumed definition I had was that a team knowingly plays the puck in an offside position in order to gain an advantage, and that's kind of what I saw there, but they just call it a regular offside, and we play on. Shot in by Lowell. The advantage being the team can't break the other way. I guess that was not the case judged by the linesman. So Anyway, puck in the RPI zone. Burke off the feed from Ferner. Far side behind Linden. This will be icing on the Engineers. 3.51 to play. Still a 3-2 Lowell lead. The go-ahead goal scored at 18.53 of the second period. Connor Wilson, his fourth goal of the season. Senior from Calgary, Alberta. One of the two captains, him and junior Ryan Lowen, wearing the C for Lowell this year. Face off in the engineer's end. One to the far side corner. O'Rourke's on it first for Lowell. O'Rourke still twisting and turning out of the corner. Chris shuts around on the wraparound try. Where is it? Oh, near side of the net. It's kept out by the pad of Savory. That one skips by Baxter out of the zone. All the way down it goes. McDonald back to pick it up for the Riverhawks. His pass knocked the stick out of Morello's hand. But it is out to center anyway. Stolen away and chipped out to center by Jerry. Now a race for it here. McDonald spins it back out to neutralize. Touch pass broken up again by Jerry. And now McNoblock as far as the RPI end. It'll be Grant back to pick it up. 
Tommy Grant, senior captain on the Sparta, New Jersey, former Bay State breaker. All Tommy Grant down the ice. He'll eventually chip it in and chase after on his own. Puck in the far corner now. Gorenson trying to steal it away was Jerry, but it's Gorenson who skates clear. Now works it near side. Lucas Kandata into the zone, top of the near circle. Poked away by Grant for a moment. Between the skates of Kandata, he finds again on the far side. Heisinger to the point. Gorenson, backdoor feed, one-timer wide open was Lowen, and it's 4-2. to two. A blown coverage there is Ryan Lowen. Picks up his sixth goal of the season. There was nobody near him, although it was a good find by Gorenson. And it's 4-2 UMass Lowell. Not a backbreaker with 12.31 left, but it's certainly going to make it a longer road here for the engineers. There was no one within 15 feet of Ryan Lowen, and there's not much savory he could do about it. An even strength goal, and Lowell's got a two goal lead. Poked through center. A big hit there on Whiffen, knocked him down. Play without a stick there was Lee. It was some nice moves. Uh, looks like some breakdancing moves. Kept the play alive with the skate. Engineers get it deep. Barisha near side for Levesque. Bouncing puck in the circle, played along. Domowski can't find it. Gloved up a uh, shovel out of the zone by the winger Sodergren. Now Johnson will carry in. Circle, shot, blocked down. Johnson again, feeds it right on through. Riley at the far point. Engineers need some offense in a hurry now. Lapping in, touches it back behind for Polino. Nice spin move to get free, dropping it off in front. Bouncing puck, pops all the way to the point. Near point, Samick. Wrist shot coming right on and a save by Wall. And he'll cover it up. 11.31 to go now. And a good answering shift there for the Engineers. They don't get a goal, but they'll have an offensive zone faceoff coming up. And we'll have, I believe, a media stoppage here. Tough one for RPI to give up. They've been playing some pretty good net front defense the last few weeks. Even going back before the weekend off, and uh, that time no one saw Ryan Lowen on the back door. And he was able to bury it. I think he's their top goal scorer. Lowen with the six now. And you can't leave him alone. Tampa Bay Lightning draft choice with his 27th career goal. Right now, the, the game winner, things end up how they stand here, will be Connor Wilson's. He scored late in the second. RPI goals come from Jacob Hayhurst and Todd Burgess, both their second on the season for the two juniors. Hayhurst to take this face off here in a increasingly Bigger spot, although it's the Riverhawks come away with it. Move it in low and drops it off there. Oh, Barton couldn't control it. He might have had a shot from the top of the slot area. Had some time and space if he was able to catch it cleanly, but he didn't. Engineers get it deep. Wall to the near side. Played up the boards. Waiting for it is Hallbauer. Makes a move around one man. Can't get by the second. Low and into the zone near side now. Low and a shot. Right pad saved by Savory. Second try, and Savory keeps it out. And it's between the legs of Savory as he continues to kind of flail in there. The whistle went. And the referee behind the goal. And it's Doug uh, Place Jr. Very definitive with his call. And I'll get a chance to watch it again. You know, Saver made a couple of saves there. Then Tour Linden's skate got near it. Yeah, Linden, or excuse me, Savory. <laughs> oh boy, that came awful close. Never went in. I'm actually a little bit surprised we got a whistle, unless, unless the net came off. Because 
I'm sure Place could see the puck. It was, you know, he blew it dead for one reason or another. You'll have to ask him why. I could see him looking at the puck outside the crease. Anyway, good stops there by Savory, keeping this a two goal game. Now a shot from the near point by Barton. It's a skate. Savory keeping that glove hand near that post, inside the post, and denying a couple of whacks. Now a wraparound try from Hausinger. Still loose in front. Another stop has to be made, that time on Kandata. Puck tipped to the near side. Burgess up the wall. No. Behind the goal now. Hausinger. Indirect to the far point is a good one. Gorenson. Barton. Near side. Back to the far point. Gorenson. Near point, Barton, top of the circle. Backdoor feed, hit a leg. There's a man sitting down in the crease. And what's the call here? It's going to be maybe a slash? Is that what I saw? Nope, interference. So the first power play of the game for Lowell comes with 10-14 left in the third period. Interference on Johnson. So Jake Johnson, who went... Eight games, nine games of his collegiate career without taking a penalty, now his two and two. He had one against Lowell on Friday in, in Lowell. Takes an interference call here. The aftermath was a, one of the River, Riverhawks sitting on the ice in the slot. Face off is won by Lowell. To start this power play, they were 0 for 4 yesterday. They come in at 16.2%. Uh, There's a wrist shot, and where'd it go? Deflected into the netting. Savory had a bit of a frantic look. As it, it wasn't in his glove. It was deflected over the top. It looked like it was headed for the near side of the net, and Savory's mitt, but uh, it was deflected up into the netting. We'll draw things up near side of the RPI zone. As a reminder, you, you're listening to live coverage of RPI Hockey 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy. Perilous Garris here at the Houston Fieldhouse with 10.01 to go in the third period. RPI down 4-2 and really a must-kill penalty situation. RPI finds itself in. Shots are 31-16. Lowell. Snap stick off the draw. That was Sodergren's. And now Hayers looking to break shorthanded. Hayers drops it back. Riley gets a touch on it, but can't control. And now nearly given away by Wilson, but Hayhurst can't hold on to that one. But at least is making it difficult for Lowell to break up ice. Now McDonald takes a hit from Hayhurst. Played near side for Wilson. Good catch on the puck on the backhand. Near side corner. Lowell looks to set things up. Back to the point. Shot coming. It was blocked by Linden. And flip far side now. Knobloch, top of the circle, takes a shot. Right pad save by Savory. And now Wilson again. Up the wall. Uh, Harris on for Linden. Tried to stick handle. Engineers need to get that puck deep. And now RPI trying to not have too many men out there. They were overly cautious, but it got the job done as they were able to get four skaters back out there in a defensive position. 40 seconds to go on the power play for Lowell. 8.50 left in the third, 4-2. Riverhawks lead. Gorenson, far side connection. Lowen drops it off. And now uh, mishandled for a moment by Blackman. He gets it back, looking for the wrist shot. It was blocked by the first man, Stick of Linden. And now Knobloch gets upended. Harris trying to clear off the glass. Second effort, Linden gets it done. Tour Linden firing it down, the freshman out of Great Falls, Virginia. Picked up his first collegiate goal here at the Houston Fieldhouse on an empty net goal. His only point of the year so far it came against Union. Out of the box. Engineers back to even. They kill off the first uh, penalty they've taken tonight. Lowen well, now along the far side wall. It's knocked down by Grant. Although he Stopped up there, lifted up the boards, glove down Polino, chance for a two on one with Ott. He finds him, Ott can't corral it there. Polino found him with a pass, uh, but uh, it hopped off his stick and he wasn't able to get his shot away. 
Was a two on one. Nah -ah -ah just off the bench. 738 left. Spinorama up the near boards. Good poke check there by Johnson. And now on comes Burgess with Polino. Stops at the near point. Polino dragging. Firing through traffic. And that one goes just wide off the glass. Up the far side boards. No. Can't get it out. Lowell will try the near side now. Domowski. Shot along far side nicely for Wilson. Wilson into the zone. Gets it as far as the line. And it's now worked up the far side boards. Half wall picked up uh, Whiffen on for Morello. He'll play it on further. Intercepted by Domowski. Takes a hit from behind by Burke. But not much to do with that one in open ice. And now Ferner. Shot all the way down. Was it touched? No. Icing on RPI with 6.49 left. And the Riverhawks leading 4-2. Face off in the RPI zone. Ryan Lowe, one of the only goal this period so far. It's given uh, Lowell a goal, one goal, two goal cushion. Puck to the near side wall, chip to center. Backing to, to get, pick it up is Sawchuk behind his own goal now, trying to get away from uh, Burke. Knoblock now near side. Berisha. Back for Sawchuk into the zone. Backdoor feed, a right pad save, and it trickles in over the left pad of Savory. It's going to be a goal for Shot. Shot's the Keller Texas native. And that is his first goal of the year and fourth of his career. Looked like Savory. Oh, he did get the first one. It was a second shot. From almost no angle, it was banked in off his right arm. Or, excuse me, left arm. What am I talking about? Got to know your left and rights. 5-2. Quick shot the other way, and a redirection. Caught the right pad of Wall in the end. Now Lowell can really slow things down if they want to. McDonald, master into the zone. He runs into Riley. And now Sodergren. Up ahead, here's Donovan Ott, near side for Laka. Laka trying to give it back to Ott, and that pass uh, out of his reach will be covered up by Wall. 5.29 to play. So now a three goal lead for Lowell. It's always tough to beat a team twice. I know we touched on it in the pregame chat with Dave Smith, but just the mentality and the uh, sense of urgency from the team that lost on the first night, whether it be the night before or two nights before, as in this case, just ramped up a little bit. And if you're the team that won, well, you don't necessarily, you know, mentally, you're not resting on any laurels there, but uh, when things go right and you have a, you know, a solid overall game like RPI had on Friday, you like to, you start to maybe think subconsciously even, you know, if we could just go out, we go out in there and do what we did last time, we'll have the same success. And that's certainly not always the case. And RPI, you know, admittedly, I'm sure, much more sharp on Friday than they've been tonight. And you can chalk that up to any number of of uh, reasons why that could be. But uh, just you know, a couple of giveaways in the defensive zone. They didn't have that coming out of their own zone in Lowell. Those giveaways can really turn the tide, and a couple of stops maybe that uh, Savory makes on Friday has not made here tonight. Tough shots nonetheless, but you know if you keep one or two out, now you're looking at a 3-2 uh, or 4-2 game instead of where we are now. 2-5-29 to go. Draw coming up in the Lowell zone. 
And poked at by Levesque, jumped on by Lepin in top of the zone, backhanded towards the net, and the blocker saved by Wall. There was plenty of bodies that had to find its way through. Hayhurst trying to dig it out of there, and we worked up the wall. Hallbauer, D to D in the neutral zone. Engineers shoot it right back in. Grant comes down off the dasher behind the net. Domowski played up the boards, and now high and out. Grant backtracking in his own zone now. He'll try the near side on the wrap for Lepinen. Up the boards off the skate of Hayhurst, kept in by Domowski. Stepping around Hallbauer. Domowski a shot over the top. Looking for the top right corner of the net. Hallbauer lifted up the wall. Laka on further. Sent back near side. Domowski shoots it off a skate. Carried on by Hallbauer. Lapping in. Waiting. Shoveling. Middle of the ice for Laka. Turning and spinning it all the way through. Just out of the reach of Hayhurst. He'll drop it off to Riley. Riley makes a move. Lost the puck in the process. Now three on two. Hallbauer making a change. Going to make this more difficult for RPI. Centering feed out in front. A good left pad stop there by Savory. I'm not sure if Hallbauer saw that play developing, but he went off on a, not the best timing. And we get a puck covered up by Wall as it came flipping down ice. 4.04 to go in this one. It's 5-2 Lowell. Shots are 35-19 for Riverhawks. So look at Savory. He's already made more stops tonight than he did last night. He had 26 yesterday. He's already got 30 in this one. And now only four of those goals should be uh, on his tab. One of them was an empty netter, the very first one. But the upcoming schedule, I'll tell you about that before we get out of here. Of course, still four minutes left. RPI is at Currently number eight, Notre Dame for two next weekend. And they're home, and then they're at Yale and Brown to close out the first semester of play. Those are two league games at Yale and Brown on December 7th and 8th. Both seven o'clock puck drops. Here we go. Face off in the Lowell zone. Pushed off the dot, far side, lifted to center ice. Back to get it is Harris. Matt Harris near side for Lee. Lee moves it across the line, gets it back, trying to shoot a pass across for Linden. And it's moved out to center by Lowell. Shot in by Lee, all the way down low it goes. McDonald takes a bump there from Polino, and it's Baxter who comes away with it. High off the glass into RPI territory, Ferner there. Ferner twisting and turning, trying to get away from Mastery, eventually does. And then Polino on further, right to Barisha. Baxter. Master trying to tip it along. Let's say he did. Didn't hear a tip, but a little bit further away than the linesman who confirmed. Tipped into the zone. It'll be rolling on goal and covered up by Wall. 3.09 left. Engineers looking for a little more offense here. It'd be tough to come back, of course, but to take something into their long road trip to Notre Dame. I know they're leaving early for that one. Jerry to take the face off here. Lifted up over the glass, not a play. Jet led two to one in the second period of this game. Four straight by Lowell. Including two in this period. And now Hausinger. Off for Lowen. His shot got blocked on its way through. Behind the goal it goes. Back for Hausinger. Near side Lowen. He takes a hit from Jerry, goes behind the cage. Grant trying to slip away from the check 
of Condada eventually does and now Jerry far side high in the air towards the Zamboni or the, not the Zamboni the Jumbotron. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. 2.20 left. Oh, there's a hit by Burgess. Could have been from behind on Lowen. It's far enough away from the wall. Now we get a penalty. Too many men? What's the call? Too many men on Lowell. And <laughs> there are still six of them out there. They're not going to. Not going to trick anybody on this one. There's six skaters on the ice for the Riverhawks, and they're still out there. Well, if you're caught, you might as well own up to it. This is not one of those run of the mill, someone stepped over the boards and touched a puck, too many men on the ice. This is legit. And if, I've always said if you're going to you know, go, go big or go home, if you're going to have six men out there, you might as well have six guys skating around trying to play the puck. Power play for RPI. We got someone's got to sit in the box. That's the someone's got to serve the penalty. It's going to be Sawchuk to serve the penalty. Laka shot that goes wide. That's all that's left of this game, really, is Laka Watch. He doesn't have a goal yet. Goals in each of his first three collegiate games. This is his fourth. He does have an assist tonight, so his point streak continues. But if he doesn't score in the next minute 50, he'll have his goal streak to start a career ended. He's out there. Shot in by Hayhurst around for Laka. Lapping in back to the point. Power play here for RPI. Minute 25 on it. There's a seven second difference between the game clock and the power play clock as the shot by Hallbauer hits the shoulder of Wall, but he keeps it out. Now Laka in. Shot deflects wide. Wrapped to the near side. Played down low by Polino. Lepinen going to try and work it far, uh, but didn't have a lot on the pass, and that allows Low to clear it out. Minute to go on the power play, 106 left in the period. Johnson, good connection to Riley, although he lost the handle and it's cleared back out to center. Johnson back on it for RPI, 53 to play. Riley fanned on the dump in and it's chipped along the other direction. Johnson back to pick it up now for RPI with 42 seconds to play, 34 on the power play clock. Shot in, but of course into the netting. That's how this one's gone for RPI after they fell behind. It hasn't been all too pretty for the engineers. A young team that's still looking to uh, put together a good run of play over multiple games. They played one of their better games of the year on Friday, but this is certainly not one of those here. 30 seconds left. RPI is about to fall to 4 and 7 overall. And UMass Lowell about to go above over 500 again. They're going to be 7, 6, and 1. Near side, 16 seconds. Morello, a little shifty move into the zone. The puck pops out of the zone. Force Ferner back to center. Nine seconds to go. Power plays over. As the puck rattles around, it'll be shot down ice. This will be icing. But it's just going to be played by Savory. Avoiding a meaningless face off at the other end of the ice. It's a good thanks to Savory there for not wasting our time here on this Sunday evening. Tough one for Owen and the Engineers. They fall 5 2 as he takes his first collegiate loss of the year, of his career. Shots were 35-20 Lowell. Face-offs 33-25 Riverhawks. Engineers finished the game one for four on the man advantage. Lowell was 0 for one. 
Goal scorers in this one for RPI, Hayhurst and Burgess. Assist to Lepinen, he had two. Lockett and Riley had the others for the engineers. The game-winning goal belongs to Connor Wilson of UMass Lowell. Assist to Matthias Gorenson and Ryan Lowen. Before we go, I'd like to thank the Rensselaer Union, which provides funding for WRPI on the club-related activity of the Institute, including WRPI's coverage of RPI hockey, football, and baseball. A reminder, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to WRPI.org. You can pick up our broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So long as WRPI is broadcasting, we'll provide that broadcast on our internet feed. Once again, that's WRPI.org. Next WRPI sports broadcast is coming up. It is I mean, Friday, Notre Dame. Joe Pisacano will be out there. Next, uh, and then we have three games that weekend, of course. RPI football taking on St. Saint John Fisher. <laughs> Another John. Johns Hopkins. On Saturday in the uh, quarterfinals of the NCAA tournament. It's a noon kickoff down in Maryland. I'd like to thank folks back at the station for inboarding tonight's game, getting us on the air and keeping us there. Once again, your final score was UMass Lowell 5 and RPI 2. This has been live coverage of RPI Hockey on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy.